Versus the Lich King. The past is dead. Knowledge is power. just a very positive and upbeat person. But she said once he started coughing, it was here to call 911. And so these police officers are standing right outside of Ruthie's door and they're listening to the sound of Ruthie's phone ringing inside of her house, but Ruthie didn't answer it. And again, the apartment stayed totally quiet. And so the responding officers turned around and began walking down the hall and knocking on other people's doors and began asking them, hey, did you hear any loud sounds coming out of Ruthie's apartment? And everybody said no. And so the police eventually just kind of gave up and left despite not seeing Ruthie, not talking to Ruthie, not seeing what's going on inside of her apartment. The next day, when one of Ruthie's friends on her floor noticed that Ruthie had not come out of her apartment all day, and when she knocked on the door, Ruthie didn't answer, this friend called the police. The police came out again, they knocked on Ruthie's door, and after a while, when she didn't answer, the police again just left. Ruthie's friend who had called the police was furious that the police were not taking this seriously, and so she wound up contacting maintenance of the building, and a janitor went up to the 11th floor, went to Ruthie's door, drilled through the lock, and pushed her door open. The janitor immediately yelled out for Ruthie, but there was no response, and so he stepped inside and kind of looked around, and right away he was struck by two things. One, it was a total mess inside of her apartment. There were all these religious books and pamphlets all over the ground, but as messy as the apartment looked, it also seemed weirdly empty. Like there was no TV, there was really no furniture or anywhere to sit. It was almost like this apartment had been half moved out and then whoever was moving it out had just kind of stopped. The janitor started to get a really bad feeling about being inside of this apartment, but he mustered the courage to walk a little farther into the apartment to look into the bedroom. And when he turned the corner and looked into that bedroom, he froze because there on the ground was Ruthie McCoy. She was lying on the ground in a pool of her own blood. She was dead. The police were called, they came out, they walked around her apartment, and they concluded that this was kind of an open and shut case. Ruthie must have opened her door for the wrong person who came inside and killed her. Remember, this apartment building saw one murder nearly every week, so this really was kind of routine. And just a couple of days later, the police would arrest a 19-year-old living in this apartment building named Edward Turner because he was found to be in possession of Ruthie's TV. Edward did not admit to doing anything, but the police assumed that, you know, he must have tried to rob Ruthie, and in the course of this robbery, perhaps Ruthie had tried to fight back, at which point Edward had overpowered her and killed her. But the police did suspect that there was at least one other person involved in Ruthie's murder, Murder, so they did keep investigating. And then in June, so about a month and a half after Edward was arrested, the police began hearing this very disturbing rumor about the building where Ruthie had lived. At first, the police completely dismissed it because it sounded totally made up. But when it kept coming up over and over again, whenever they interviewed anybody in this building about Ruthie's murder, the police finally decided they had to at least look into it in order to confirm that it was not true. However, when the police looked into this rumor, they would discover that it was true, and it absolutely played a role in Ruthie's murder. Back on the night of April 22nd, 1987, so the night that Ruthie called 911 in a panic, saying something about her cabinets and her neighbors and her bathroom, well, what had really happened is Ruth was home around 845 when she heard this loud banging sound coming from her bathroom. And then before she could go over and inspect the bathroom, her bathroom door flung open and standing in the doorway was this dark, tall figure who just suddenly took off running through her apartment, out her front door, out into the hallway. 
Ruthie was so startled she had no idea what to make of it. She knew that sometimes she saw things that weren't real, and so she likely struggled to figure out, did that really happen? Am I dreaming? Am I hallucinating? What's going on? And so with all these thoughts going through her head, she called 911 to get help, but she couldn't quite describe what had even happened. And so that's why she began rambling about how her neighbors wanted to use her bathroom and the cabinets were somehow involved. It was all very confusing. And so the dispatcher obviously didn't understand what was going on, but they told Ruthie, okay, I'll pass this along and the police will be out soon. And so as Ruthie is waiting for the police to show up, she wanders over to the bathroom where this dark figure has appeared and she walks inside and she looks at where her mirror had been above her sink. The mirror that she had spent so many hours looking into, hoping for signs of a miracle, and the mirror was gone. And in its place was this big dark hole on the wall, almost like an entrance to a dark tunnel. And as Ruthie is staring at this void, she sees these two dark hands emerge from underneath that come out of the hole and grip onto her sink. And then eyes pop up and a man's head pops up. And then he uses his arms, which are clutched onto the sink, to pull himself up and out of the hole in her wall where he plopped down on the bathroom floor and then stood up and stared at Ruthie. And then everything after that point would have happened really fast. Ruthie likely began screaming, at which point the first man, the dark figure that had run out into the hallway and prompted Ruthie to call 911, he must have heard Ruthie screaming, and so he came running back in through the front door into Ruthie's apartment with a jacket over his head, and then at some point he or the other man who had come out of the hole in the wall yelled at Ruthie to get down on the ground. Maybe she didn't comply, maybe she did, but after that, four gunshots rang out. All four shots hit Ruthie. However, these four shots did not kill Ruthie right away. And so Ruthie was very alive as these two men stole her TV, they stole her rocking chair and some other things. And Ruthie was almost certainly still alive when the police did finally show up and began knocking on her door and calling her phone. But she was bleeding to death. She couldn't move, she couldn't make a sound, but the police just abandoned her, at which point she did die. It would turn out that disturbing rumor that the police heard about this apartment building was that apparently people in this building had learned that you could pull off your mirror inside of your bathroom and literally climb into the walls. And from that point, you could basically wander all over this building and then punch other people's mirrors in their bathrooms in and then climb through that hole and do whatever you wanted to the people inside of that apartment. And so when Ruthie began hearing those whispers when she was in her bathroom looking at the mirror hoping for a miracle, those were the sounds of thieves and killers and criminals slinking about her wall. Detectives speculated that the two men who killed Ruthie likely found out about her disability payments and decided to rob her. However, the two men that police arrested, the 19-year-old Edward Turner, who was found in possession of her TV, and this other man who was also arrested, were ultimately acquitted because there were so many people crawling through the walls all day and night inside of this building that there was no way to prove that those two were the ones who actually went in and killed Ruthie. To this day, no one else has ever been charged with Ruthie's murder. What happened to Ruthie became the basis for the very popular horror movie called The Candyman, starring Tony Todd. So that's gonna do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, please sneak in to the like button's house, toast all of their bread, and then leave. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. We have a podcast called the Mr. Ballin Podcast that puts out brand new exclusive content on Mondays and on Thursdays, we put out the remastered audio of our best YouTube videos. Again, it's just called the Mr. Ballin Podcast and it is available exclusively on Amazon Music. Consider donating to our charity called the Mr. Ballin Foundation, which honors and supports victims of violent crime as well as their families. 
Monthly donors to the Mr. Ballin Foundation Honor Them Society will receive free gifts and exclusive invites to special live events. Go to mrballin.foundation and click on Get Involved to join the Honor Them Society today. We have two additional YouTube channels, Mr. Ballin Shorts and Mr. Ballin and Espanol. We post near daily content on TikTok, Facebook, and Snapchat. All of those pages are just called Mr. Ballin. If you want to get in touch with me, please follow me on any major social media platform and then send me a direct message. My username is just at Mr. Ballin and I really do read the majority of my DMs. Check out our brand new website, ballinstudios.com, to join our Discord server, to buy merch, to see what we're up to, to see what events are coming up. It's all on ballinstudios.com. So whether I see you on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, other YouTube channels, the podcast, wherever, just know that I really appreciate your support. And until next time, that's going to do it. See ya. Today, we're going to look at three places you can't go and people who went there anyways. But before we get into those stories, if you're a fan of the Strange, Dark, and Mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please sneak in to the like button's house in the middle of the night and burn several bags of microwave popcorn. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's stories. On February 15, 2004, two police officers drove down a quiet street in a little English village called Murrow, and they pulled over in front of this little brick bungalow. Earlier that day, a neighbor who lived on the street had called the police to report hearing a strange digging sound coming from inside of this bungalow. And so these officers had been sent out to see what the sound was and make sure the occupants of this home were okay. Now, these two officers were not particularly worried about the occupants of this house. They assumed that some wild animal must have snuck in while the owners were away, and that was all this was. But as they would quickly learn, that was not the case. After climbing out of their car, the two officers just stopped and listened for a second to see if they could hear this digging sound, but the bungalow was quiet, the street was quiet, and so the two officers shut their car doors and made their way up to the front porch of this bungalow and knocked on the front door. After a few moments, when nobody answered, one of the officers reached down and tried the handle and found it was unlocked. And so he opened the door just a crack and he called out through this opening in the door into the bungalow saying, hey, you know, it's police, we're here to check on you. But when no one called back to them, the officer opened the door the rest of the way and immediately both officers saw there was a huge problem inside of this house. The entire first floor was flooded with several inches of water and they could hear from somewhere in the back of the property the sound of running water. And so again, both officers called out into this house to try to get the attention of anyone who might be inside. And when again, they were met with silence, the officers walked into the flooded house and began walking straight back towards this running water sound. And eventually, after walking through the living room, they entered this hallway that went right to the back of the property. And as soon as they were in it, they could see there was an open door at the end of the hallway on the left. And it seemed like the running water sound was coming out of that room. And so the two officers, one by one, sloshed down this hallway to this room. They turned left, looked inside, and what they saw completely shocked them and immediately sprung them into action. Two months before these officers came to this bungalow and found it flooded with water, the owner of this bungalow, 51-year-old Ronald McClagish, had broken up with his girlfriend. And this breakup was really hard on Ronald. He was already divorced, he was totally broke, he had loads of health issues like bad asthma, he had some liver issues, and just generally he was someone who was kind of physically frail. And so this girlfriend had been... 